Hi guys, it's Bob again, N9KR in southern Indiana, and we're on a workbench today doing a little repair work on one of our uh, homebrew transmitters, single band transmitters, and thought it might be a good time to show just a few things about uh, some of the concepts we used in designing and building these things. We've got some other stuff on the bench here. Actually, this is a little experiment we've got going with uh, with some ultrasonic uh, distance measuring uh, modules that we picked up on eBay and a uh, Arduino and some simple Arduino code. Uh, these guys, probably for another time, but these guys are proving to be uh, kind of interesting and cheap and easy to work with. Some fun experimenting with some. Uh... For right now, we're going to focus on this uh, little 30 meter uh, uh, QRP transmitter that's very similar in design to all of our single band transmitters that we use in our homebrew setup, homebrew CW station. I actually use a VFO just just like this one uh, to uh, control these guys as well as uh, the receiver, the homebrew receiver in transceive mode. So this is our 30 meter transmitter with the cover removed and as you can see it's built Manhattan style using ugly construction just like many of our projects. We found it just really easy to work with and uh, it's not beautiful but it's very functional. Uh, this design uh, was uh, kind of compiled from a variety of sources, including uh, some work by Wes Hayward, uh, some work by uh, Doug DeMaw, and some ARRL handbook and, and other sources. And uh, it's essentially a, the same transmitter that we've used, the same design for all of our single band CW transmitters. Uh, it's basically a, a four stage design with uh, our input going into a uh, SA612 mixer. We use uh, a 9 megahertz uh, crystal oscillator uh, on the mixer, which is the same as our, IO f or our IF frequency for our receiver, uh, so that we can use this transmitter in these transmitters in uh, full transceive mode with a single uh, uh, DDS VFO that we've looked at. We've looked at that VFO in other, other videos. But basically, we feed our VFO signal into the mixer. We mix that with that 9 megahertz uh, crystal oscillator, and then we go into a... Uh, uh, we go through a little uh, uh, filter, a little uh, resonant, uh, parallel resonant filter to kind of uh, shape, shape and uh, clean up the signal at that point. And then we go right into a uh, buffer stage, which is a little 2N2222 just acting basically as a buffer between the mixer and the follow-on uh, amplifier stages. And our buffer stage here in this, in this uh, box is right here, a little 2N2222. Uh, the mixer is down underneath these two uh, transformers, difficult to see. In this case, for 30 meters, these are 10.7 megahertz little transformers, very common. And it was easy to configure those and use those to uh, clean up that signal coming out of the mixer. Um, then we go into a little driver stage, which is uh, here, still difficult to see in this video, I know. That's another 2N2222. And from there, at that point, our signal is probably in the range of about... Uh, one, one and a half to two volts peak to peak. And we, f we go into this amplifier stage here, which for the lower bands, that can be the final stage. That'll give us right around one to two watts using uh, the most popular one that, that I found that works well for me is the 2N3866. Uh, and very often it needs a uh, heat cap on it, a heat uh, sink. In this case, we don't have one, but we found it not necessary in this particular, uh, in this particular build. And also we have, uh, that's our output, we're, so we're at uh, 1 to 2 watts output at that point, around 20 volts peak to peak, into a, uh, a Pi network output and then into our antenna system or our follow-on system after this. Uh, in some cases, as is the case with this unit, we needed some a little additional amplification, so we went with a IRF 510 uh, FET amplifier. We run, that, we run that about 17 volts. Uh, actually, we have a separate uh, input line for our 17 volts here that it's a little bit awkward. It comes out of the front of the chassis, but it works well for us. And, and then there's another filter after that, and then we feed that on out to our antenna system or whatever follow-on amplifier that we might want to use. So this system, as it sits, will put out just about uh, 4 or 5 watts for us, which is just perfect for our setup. One additional thing about this circuit, use a... Uh, a little uh, keying circuit uh, to key the 12 volts to apply that voltage to three st stages simultaneously. The keying transistor we use is right here. It's a typical uh, 2N3906. And we key actually the buffer stage 
the driver stage and the uh, mixer itself stage back here uh, all simultaneously with this little uh, king circuit and uh, power is applied to the output transistor all the time. I need to add that uh, the IRF 510 circuit, that final amplifier, does actually require a good heat sink. It generates quite a lot of heat. In this case we we had a heat sink that was removed from an old PC uh, CPU and uh, kind of physically went right in this box and that thing worked out great. Mounted it. Actually it's kind of 90 degrees from the from this board that we used. Uh, another uh, kind of an ugly build here, a little a board that we mounted vertically, but that's that's for the circuitry to support that IRF 510, that final amplifier stage. There's a little variable pot on there that you can see, and also to the left, it's kind of dark, but there's a little uh, voltage regulator there as well. Uh, so we, we pick off, uh, with that regulator, we provide 5 volts through a little circuit so that we can adjust with that, with that variable pot. We can adjust the bias uh, to that output amplifier, that IRF 510, which is an FET device. Kind of critical to get that bias about right. It's about it's right around 3 volts. But uh, it, once that's set, that stays uh, stays solid. And, and this setup, again, will give us a good about uh, oh, three, 3 to 4 uh, watts of output, maybe 5 watts, depending on the antenna and the, and the uh, tuner that you're using with the setup. Now let me flip this around and take a look just quickly at the back. Connections on the back is basically only four connections that go to this um, transmitter. Uh, very simply, there's uh, 12 volts uh, that is applied, and in addition, there's that 17 volts that we have fed in from the front for the amplifier. But there's a key key jack there on the right, and uh, I have an on-off on this guy to turn it on and off. 12 volts, and there's a VFO input, and then the far connector on the left is our is our output connector. As I said, all these all these modules are built very similarly. So here's a hand-drawn version of a schematic of uh, of the 40 meter uh, version of this the same CW transmitter that we have have built up here. We have current bills for 80, 40, uh, 30, 20, and 15 meters and all very very similar so hopefully uh, you can see this drawing and it may hopefully it'll be of of some help you need to keep in mind also that the uh, the values shown on this drawing were arrived at through a combination of some research and uh, some experimentation and your mileage will probably vary uh, you're going to be close for 40 meters in this case and you'll have to do your own research on uh, if you build this uh, this rig for the other bands, the particularly the uh, the output stages, the wound coils on the output stages are going to uh, change value uh, for the other bands. Well, we've got our uh, little 30 meter transmitter set back up again in its rightful place, right over here in our uh, homebrew CW station, and uh, we got the rig on here, and we're sitting on 30 meters. So we thought we'd first of all check the band and see if there's any activity. Kind of quiet. And a little bit of activity on 30 meters. Let's go up to the high end of the band and uh, we've got our keyer online here and we'll go on up the high end of the band and try and find a quiet spot. See if it's busy. URL, are you busy? We're only got uh, we're only running barefoot on the transmitter, running about uh, oh about four watts, about four watts output into our uh, 40 meter inverted V, and we're using our antenna tuner. And we got a pretty good SWR, so we'll uh, let's try a CQ and uh, see if there's any activity, and then maybe we'll uh, if we don't get an answer, we'll check the reverse beacon on the web and see if anybody out there hears us with our three or four watts. Try a CQ first. We got that programmed in the tuner, so we'll go ahead and hit that and try it. Alright, 
listen up, see if we hear anybody. Don't hear any responses. Let's check the reverse beacon here and see if see if anybody comes back on the reverse beacon. Don't see it. Let's refresh that screen. Yeah, we got a couple of hits on the reverse beacon. WZ7I and WE9V heard us at 11 dB and 8 dB respectively. Not bad for 3 or 4 watts. Heard somebody tuning up here. Let's send a let's send a uh, QRZ, see what happens. See if anybody responds to that. Nope. I don't hear any response. We might have to kick on a little bit more power. Check the reverse beacon here one more time to see if we get any additional. Yeah, we had one more kick in. K1TTT apparently heard us up there, 12 dB. Not too bad a signal, um, all things considered, for 30 meters with 4 watts.